it's a very interesting topic, but uh, we have a couple more very, very interesting topics. And one question in particular that is hot right now, um, and, and it has been kind of discussed, especially with the collapse of uh, decentralized exchanges, is, is proof of reserves. And of course, the other component of proof of reserves, right? It's like, okay, sure, I can show you that there's money there, but how do I know that what the liabilities are, right? So um, let's basically, what are some of the cryptographic techniques that we can enable proof of reserves and liabilities? Uh, Dr. Kat, if, if no, I can no, get this please, one, please, yeah, 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 this, this is my topic, thing. actually. <laughs> I try to do all of this work at Facebook, at Meta, right? Imagine Meta try to be as um, uh, like friendly to the regulators as possible. I mean, literally offering whatever is possible. And then we extend it when I joined Misten. And we even get uh, like interns that are working on this particular topic. So what's happening and why cryptography is important, right? One of the major issues with proof of liabilities is in practice, any exchange, especially if there is no regulation, can say that, hey, I owe to my customers if they all try to withdraw this amount of money, right? And they can state this. Who can audit this, right? I mean, there are particular exchanges that they live in, uh, like the restrictions for which there is no auditing system. And then if the users the, who own these assets on their exchange, right, which are in their books, in the Excel sheet, there is some accounting book and they know, oh, Costas has uh, 300 Bitcoin, uh, uh, Anike has, I don't know, uh, 1,000 Bitcoin and so on, Joshua has more. How do we ensure that the total amount that they advertise is exactly their whole liabilities uh, for all of their customers? And then there is a, um, like a, a whole um, like sector in cryptography. There's usually a called proof of liabilities. And in the background, they're using zero knowledge proofs or like uh, Merkle trees where imagine people putting their balances into a leaf of a Merkle tree, like each one has their leaf. And then we go up to the root and it's not the regular Merkle tree. It's actually um, uh, a summation Merkle tree. Every single time we go up, we add left and right the leaves and then eventually you go up to the root and we have a commitment, a commitment into a total sum. Now, if you add zero knowledge proof over this, that the construction was uh, literally correct, then what you can do is you can create a, for the first time a decentralized sampling system, which means that you can provide this top root of the Merkle tree into a blockchain or any public bulletin board. And then if a user like myself, uh, I see, I don't know, one, one particular company publishing a total amount of uh, liabilities, is my 300 Bitcoin there? Because this is what we do, right? In real life, we have auditors and the auditors do statistical sampling as well, and they also do uh, some other uh, like checks. But what if there is no such um, a requirement in this system? Use your users. So you, every user can actually have uh, like the, uh, the potential to be able to check at least their own balances included in the total with privacy, right? Because we don't want to reveal our uh, like Bitcoins uh, whenever we're doing this check. And imagine we prove that if only a small percentage of users actually uh, checks their involvement, like their inclusion in this summation, we have 99.9% .9 .9 probability that the, um, uh, that the exchange is not cheating. So this is when you're implementing all of this correctly. However, I realized when I went all to, to many exchanges that they implemented this stuff, they made some mistakes. And the mistakes come from, like in some particular situations, are silly mistakes. For example, they are truncating the hashes into eight bytes. And imagine now someone can brute force it, right? I can find another balance that even if you prove impl inclusion for your 300 uh, uh, Bitcoins, I put one Bitcoin there. And then you can never figure out because you verified the inclusion correct. So this was one issue that I identified in some of the major exchanges. You can see my work uh, on the web. And then we realized another issue that they are, they are doing. Some of them were using wrong cryptography, outdated. Many of these protocols were not published in uh, conferences, so they were not peer-reviewed, and they were exchanged in some forums. So some exchanges or the auditors actually grab them, and they use them without extra auditability, like from some cryptographer like Dr. Kate to be the auditor of this particular scheme. And the other thing that we realized was uh, like a mistake is they didn't use the blockchain to publish the commitment. The blockchain, we have to take it into account, right? It's a public bulletin board for a reason. There is one view of what you are publishing. Imagine if the exchange is signing over a route here and another route somewhere else. It sends me the other route and to, to Dr. Cut another route. And we both verify our involvement correctly, but we're actually verifying uh, inclusion in different commitments, right? So this was also a mistake and they, they could always sit here. And in some particular cases, another issue I realized 
is all of the platforms and exchanges typically assign a unique ID to the user, right? However, if the unique ID is what identifies me into the system, if I had 300 Bitcoins and Dr. Kate had 300 Bitcoins, but somehow the exchange used the same user ID for both of us, we will both verify the same $300 in the same commitment. However, it's $600, right? It's 300 and 300. So we're both happy, but because there was never any assurance that like these unique IDs are indeed unique, the, uh, the exchanges could actually um, merge all of the balances that are the same. And in some particular cases, this is true. People typically uh, and, uh, tend to have like rounded values, like two Bitcoins. I don't have 1.9 Bitcoin. I buy literally two Bitcoins, right? And then they could seed up to 5% or something in some particular application. So we need cryptography. We know zero knowledge proofs and um, like good accumulators are very important for crypto, but we need good auditing as well. But this is a technology. It exists out there. We know people are doing it in the wrong way, but we're here to, to solve this problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very nice uh, summary course. So I know that we are uh, coming to the close. So I'll, I want to just add one point to it, like extremely, it's very great to hear all the really experience. I, uh, it can be like, you can write a SMK on this, on this topic. Uh, so thing we, I want to add here is that one could, could be uh, in the future, it could be interesting to also somehow if we can link the results as well as liabilities when it comes yeah. to the web two world. So, for example, can we bring the Web2 data also to the Web3 towards in possibly so so that uh, many of those Web2 connections could be TNS. So can, how can we collect that data in a privacy preserving manner is also a very interesting problem. Uh, there's solution like Deco that I've come across in that respect, but there is certainly more that we can do uh, in that respect. And that's certainly something a problem that I want to bring attention to. But yeah, I know we have only a couple of minutes left, so I'll leave it up to them. Yeah, thanks, Kosa. Great to hear those yeah that was a very uh, great explanation thank you so much and i want to remind all developers whether you work at a project a uh, blockchain project or exchange um don't roll your own crypto talk to professionals experts you know mathematicians dr kate dr hostess um and others um and and be vigilant and robust and like careful this is very serious stuff it's high stakes so you know don't rush um move fast but do not break things you know <laughs> um and uh, yeah, uh, so, you know, I, we do have only about a minute and a half left. I do want to see if, um, you know, just in one or two minutes, we can just talk about like you, each of you personally, what is one thing that you're really interested in or like inspires you about blockchain and the future of blockchain? Maybe a couple sentences each. Um, maybe we can start with uh, uh, Kostas. Yeah, imagine uh, like my middle name here, Cryptos is not random. I named my oldest son Cryptos, right? <laughs> I'm full all in into the, into the like cryptography space. I personally work a lot with zero knowledge rules and to tell you the truth, I believe it will be the future. It's already the moon math of cryptography, along with like succinct accumulators and all of this stuff, like the work that Dr. Kata is doing. But I believe we will see uh, like uh, more systems into anonymous credentials along with zero knowledge rules and maybe in the future even fully homomorphic encryption. I want to see it on, on the blockchain somehow. And this is where I'm focusing these days along with my team to for new primitives on, on, in the space. Yeah, so uh, starting from where you left off, I look from the application perspective, the all things that you mentioned are related to privacy. And I think I find the privacy to be an extremely important topic uh, that is understudied from two directions. One, I want to just make a, a bold statement here. Uh, privacy on blockchains or even in off-chain world is expensive today. Even going beyond 10,000 or 10,000 transactions per second is not possible, so it can't scale. We need solution that can scale here, and that's a crypto. That's a technical and cryptography challenge, and possibly we may want to make it scale in the post quantum world, making things more more difficult. But I want to add one more aspect, which is uh, probably even challenging because more human is the regulation issue. So we need to see more clarity there in terms of how can the privacy and regulation can work in hack, hand in hand. And it certainly is a very important topic that we have to look into because as more and more people start to use the systems. Privacy is going to become an important and crucial factor. 100%. Privacy is human, human right, and we won't transact as much as we would if it's just completely all out in the open. And that is a very uh, astute observation that there's kind of two forces. You have privacy and you have these regulations, and they're kind of a little bit at odds with each other, but there will be a happy medium. 
Well, thank you so much. It was really fantastic. I really love to talk with you guys, um, you know, uh, absolute geniuses. And thank you so much for, for attending MoveCon. And we hope to see you soon again. That's the end of our session. Thank you, Joshua.